All right, guys, welcome to this page of the notes. And now that we've been introduced to the natural base E, it's time to go ahead and talk about the continuously compounding interest formula. I, I hope almost all of you have seen this formula before. You should have been introduced to it in some form or another in a previous math course. But if you haven't, don't worry. I'll make sure I go over all of it with you here. But hopefully for some of you, this is going to be a review. This is the continuously compounding interest formula. It's this guy right here, continuously compounding interest formula. That guy right there, A equals P E. That's the natural base E raised to the RT power. And again, let me just quickly show you where it comes from. Right, You guys will remember this formula from earlier on in this chapter. A equals A naught times 1 plus R over N raised to the NT power. But remember what's happening here. N was the number of times interest is compounded. Is it compounded yearly, quarterly, monthly, weekly? daily, right? How often is the interest compounded? Well, what we said at the first page, on the first page of these notes is, what if the interest was compounded continuously? What if it was continuously growing? Well, in that case, n would go to infinity. And when that happens, you'd have 1 plus r over infinity raised to the infinity power. And we said at the beginning on the front page of the notes that that is equal to this number E, the natural base E. So what this is, is it is our um, compounding interest formula, right? It's our compounding interest formula. The only difference is because of E, the interest is being continuously compounded. And so we replace all this junk in here within E, right? Just replace it with that natural base E. So the continuously compounding interest formula comes from the compounding interest formula. It's just now the interest is being continuously compounded and we wind up with that natural base E. Again, why the natural base deserves its own section here in chapter seven, because it's really important. It shows up in a lot of important places. The continuously compounding interest formula being one of them. Now, all of the variables are exactly the same as they were for this guy. There's just less of them. A is still going to be the final amount. P is still going, oh, sorry, 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 not A naught. P. P is still going to represent the principal. It's the initial investment. R is going to be the interest rate. You must convert that decimal or that percent to a decimal. It has to be a decimal. Please do not plug the percentage in. It will not work. Plug in the decimal. You need the decimal, and T will be the time uh, that you are accruing that interest, right? How long you wait before you go back and pull the money out. So I've got a great problem for you guys here. Most of you are in high school doing algebra two, and so college is in your near future. So let's do a college problem. Here we go. When Angelina was born, her grandparents all grams and grams, deposited $3,000 into a college savings account that pays 4% interest, compounded continuously. Grams and grams are real concerned about Angelina's future. They want to make sure she gets off to a good start in college. So they decided when she was born to go ahead and start a college savings account. And they put $3,000 into the account. But now Angelina is in Algebra 2. And she's thinking about that and wondering, gee, I think I need to do a few calculations here and figure out what's going on with grams and grams of money. So here's what we've got. Part A, it's a three-part problem. Let's start with part A. Assuming there were no deposits or withdrawals from the account, what will the balance be after 10 years? All right, so it was deposited when she was born. By the time Angelina is 10, how much money is in the account? Well, this is actually really, really simple. We're just going to take our compounding interest formula, continuously compounding interest formula. We'll label this part A. A is equal to P E to the R T. And let's go ahead and figure out how much is going to be in that account after 10 years. We'll be solving for A. Well, the principal, grams and grams, put $3,000 into the college savings account. 
we have our natural base E. Remember, you have a base E number on your calculator. It should be the second function for the LN button. The rate is 4%. I'll need to convert that to a decimal, which is going to be 0.04. And we're going to multiply that by the number of years that this money is in the account. Let's say that it is, well, not let's say, it's 10 years. All right, here we go. We're going to go ahead and start doing this in our calculator. Please be very, very careful of the order of operations. You don't want your calculator to screw this up on you. So here's what you're going to do. I would start by multiplying 0 0.4 times 10. When you do that, actually, yeah, 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 yeah. You, you get um, zero, uh, 0.4. Yeah, 0 0.4 times 10 is going to be 0 0.4. Then you'll do base E raised to the 0.4 power. You're going to get an irrational number. Please do not round. Just keep what you get. I get 1.49 dot, 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 dot. Um, it just keeps going. Like I said, it's an irrational number. Take that number, whatever you got, multiply it by 3,000. And you should get $4,475. And 47 cents. All right, so here's the deal. Grams and Gramps deposit $3,000 into a savings, a college savings account when Angelina is born. It pays 4% interest, and 10 years later, they made $1,400. Okay, all right, okay. Maybe no big deal. Here's what Angelina knows, all right? Angelina, she's sitting in Algebra 2 class. She's planning for college just like the rest of you. She's looking at the astronomical bill that she knows college is going to be. It's a doozy these days. And so she thinks to herself, all right, all right, I don't expect grams and grams to pay for my college education, right? I, I, I can take care of that. But it would be nice if the money grams and grams gave me could help cover some of those extra expenses like books or paying for a parking permit or maybe to help out with a meal plan. So Angelina's sitting there in Algebra 2 and she goes, you know what, here's what I think I would need. If Gramps and Gramps, if that college savings account could have $10,000 in it, right? $10,000 isn't even going to put a dent in college tuition, but ten grand could certainly help cover, if not all, a lot of those additional expenses you have when you go to college. So here's what Angelina thinks to herself. Well, let me figure out when I graduate at 18, right? When I graduate at age 18, how much money will be in the account? So what she wants to do is figure out how long will it take for there to be $10,000 in the account? Well, let's do that. Part B. Part B. Let's see if, let's see if grams and grams can at least help out with some of those additional expenses. Well, the equation, the formula is A equals PE to the RT. But now this is different, right? Here's what I'm trying to figure out. I want to know how long, right? How long? That's T. We're going to be solving for time. How long will it take grams and grams $3,000 investment to become $10,000? So we plug in everything we know, 10000 is equal to 3,000 E raised to the 0 0.04, because that's the interest rate, and then T, right? And we're going to be solving for T. Well, here we go. I got to get that E to the 0 0.4 T by itself. Remember, reverse order of operations, since I have multiplication here, we have to take care of that first. That's got to go first. So 10,000 divided by 3,000, you wind up with 10 over 3, 10 thirds. So we have 10 thirds is equal to e to the 0.04t. Well, now what do I do? How do I get that t by itself? Oh yeah, snail method. We're going to take our exponential function, convert it to a base e logarithmic function, which of course will be ln. So we'll take the ln of 10 thirds, and that's all going to be equal to 0.04t. Well, now all I have to do is get that t by itself, which I can easily do by dividing by 0.04. 
So I get T is equal to the ln of 10 thirds divided by 0 0.04. And let's see what we get here. I got a calculator right here. I'm going to do the ln. I'll put 10 thirds in parentheses so my calculator doesn't mess up the order of operations. Divide by 0 0.04. And we wind up with, whew, look at that. I get 30. 0.1 years. All right, now, Angelina is sitting in Algebra 2 class, and she just, she's a loo. We've got ourselves an issue. Unless something goes horribly wrong for Angelina in high school, it's not going to take her 30.1 years to graduate. And sad to say, but if it does take Angelina 30.1 years to graduate high school, I don't think college is in the cards for her. So, Here's what Angelina knows. She's sitting in Algebra 2. She knows, right, that interest isn't accruing very quickly. She knows that if grams and grams are going to help her pay for some stuff, she needs at least $10,000. But in order to have $10,000 in the account, it's going to take 30.1 years. And Angelina's practically to graduation. She's only got a couple years of high school left. So what is Angelina to do? Well, she's got a couple of options. Either Angelina could try, she could go back to the bank and say, hey, here's what I need. I need a much higher interest rate. You give me a better interest rate so the money grows faster. That way when I graduate, I'll have $10,000 in the account. But if any of you know anything about banking or bankers, you go sit down in front of them and say, I'm, I'm going to need a better interest rate than that. They're just going to laugh at you. The interest rate is what it is. She can't change it. She also can't change the fact that she's going to be graduating at the age of 18. She's on schedule. She's going to graduate on time, but she knows she needs $10,000. So Angelina is faced with only one option. Angelina has to go to Grams and Gramps and say, listen, Grams and Gramps, I love you to death. You're awesome people, but let's talk real deals here, all right? Dollars and cents. I'm going to need you to, to go ahead and pinch those pennies. All right, maybe grams and grams have got to eat ramen noodles a couple nights a week, all right? But I'm going to need you to put more money into my college savings account so by the time I graduate, right, I've got $10,000. But Angelina doesn't want to have that conversation with grams and grams unless she knows how much she needs grams and grams to kind of fork over. So here we go. Let's figure that out. Angelina's sitting in college algebra, or sitting in college algebra, sitting in algebra two. We're talking about college and we're doing algebra. <laughs> um, so she has A equals PE to the RT. And here's what Angelina knows. She knows she wants $10,000. That's to help her pay for all the little extras, right? Won't even touch college tuition, but it can help with some of the other stuff. What she's trying to figure out is, how much money does she need from grams and gramps so that at the interest rate the bank is going to give you, you know, get a different one, in 18 years, there'll be $10,000 in the account. Well, here we go. Let's do some algebra. All right, I got to get this P all by itself. This is the easiest one to do. Take E to the 0 0.04 times 18, divide it to the other side. Why? Well, because that's multiplication right there, I just divide it to the other side. P is equal to 10,000 divided by E raised to the 0 0.04 times 18 power. All right, it's a calculator problem. Don't fat finger something on your calculator. It should be okay. Natural base E, raise it to the 0 0.04 times 18, right? Get that answer. 10,000 divided by that number, here's what I got. I got $4,867.52. So here's what Angelina knows. She knows she needs to go back to Grams and Gramps and say, listen, I appreciate the three grand. You guys are awesome. I love you guys to death. But unfortunately, Grams and Gramps, it's just not enough. You think you could possibly come up with, you know, $4,867 or something like that. That way I've got $10,000 in my account. Now, I know in this problem, Angelina's already in Algebra 2. She's only a couple of years from graduation. There's no way she could go back. This is where you guys get to use this as a learning experience. At some point in the very near future, hopefully some of you will have the opportunity to be parents. 
You'll want to consider your children's college education. And at that point, while they're still young, you have an opportunity to begin saving. Go ahead. Use that Algebra 2 you're learning right now after you've graduated to go ahead and figure out, well, if I want my kids to have this much when they go off to college, what do I need to invest now so that they can have that money later on? Unfortunately, it's a little too late for Angelina, but it's not too late for you. So, good luck with college, you guys. I had a great time uh, sort of going through this natural base exponential function with you. I can't wait to see you next time. Bye.